Today, we're talking to Blockstack's Munib Ali and Patrick Stanley, who are building a decentralized internet on the blockchain. And then we get to try it ourselves. Let's go. Basically, I think the internet started off definitely as a, as a decentralized system. Uh, it was funded by DARPA and a bunch of other research institutions where it was almost like a design requirement that these protocols should not have any single point of failure. Mm -hmm. They should be able to actually survive a nuclear war. Right? So if parts of the internet are destroyed sure. in a nuclear war, it should be able to route around those problems. So the lower layers of the, uh, of the protocols, things that were developed in the 70s, 80s, early 90s, they're like very, very fairly decentralized, even today. Yeah. Right. What ended up happening is in like the late 90s, early 2000s, effectively when cloud computing happened, People realize that in certain ways, it's easier to do things at a large company. Uh, and, and some of the things started getting centralized. Also, another interesting thing that happened is some of the core components of the internet that should have been built as kind of like core internet infrastructure, it was almost like uh, the original designers and builders kind of like didn't really fully finish the job. Mm -hmm. So some large companies like Google and Facebook came in uh, to provide alternative services, right? So imagine like an uh, authentication system, right? Yeah. A lot of people use Google or Facebook to log in to, into other things, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if the internet itself had kind of like a universal username or a universal authentication system, then you wouldn't need to sign up on different websites sure. uh, or use Google or Facebook to, to sign up everywhere. Right. Right? So this is like an example of just one thing. Yeah. Um, so yes, the internet kind of like became centralized again. And it's very interesting that it's almost like a pendulum swing. Mm -hmm. like you go too much in one direction and then there's a movement to like go back because people are noticing right. like uh, bad things happening. And what we're noticing here is kind of like a re-decentralization of the internet. Whereas to the old school people, it would sound funny when right. people say the decentralized web. They'll be like, wait a minute, the web was like always decentralized. Yeah. Yeah. But it went through like a two decade period sure. of uh, rapidly getting centralized. That's fantastic. And and so help us understand like the central point of failure and you know the idea that you know um, there's the authentication that happens, the certification that happens, and storage issues. You have a fantastic white paper that kind of outlines all this stuff technically speaking, but could you help walk us through what a central point of failure is and what Blockstack is doing to help prevent that? Basically, think of this as uh, there have been different stages of uh, computing, right? Like people had mainframes, then we had desktops, the internet kind of like started when people had desktops, and then we got cloud computing, where a lot of the user data and computations were happening in the cloud. Right, so less things were happening on your computers, more things were happening out in the cloud. And the next wave of computing, we believe is called decentralized computing, where some of those power structures are, are being changed, where instead of relying on other companies, on other cloud providers, users are more in control and they're running, uh, they're keeping their data in their private data lockers, they're running more of the computations themselves. And, and Blockstack is like one decentralized computing platform. Mm -hmm. uh, that is basically targeting uh, that next wave of computing. So people would remember in the 90s that AOL was really trying to be the portal to the internet, mm -hmm. right? And, and uh, it was trying to actually provide a lot of services that people would expect from the internet itself. AOL is a company. Mm -hmm. and if AOL succeeded and it kind of like was the internet, then if AOL went down, there was no, there's no way for you to access uh, that stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. Whereas what ended up happening is that because the internet was more decentralized, there are many like internet service providers, there are many different chat applications, there are many different uh, kind of like ways for you, you to connect to your email and so on, right? So if let's say Time Warner goes down, only the Time Warner customers are impacted. Mm -hmm. Everyone who is using a different ISP is not impacted versus like a large AOL that if they don't go down, everyone goes down. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you know, if uh, you know, S Facebook Messenger goes down, doesn't mean that you cannot like talk to your friends who are on a different network, right? right? So there's no like single point of failure in, in, in terms of messaging or at the ISP layer and so on, mm -hmm. right? But what starts happening when we talk about this uh, rapid, and maybe that's why Facebook Messenger is not a great example, is you would start noticing that a single company, Facebook, is gaining a lot of monopoly power Right, because they bought 
WhatsApp, mm -hmm. right? They are exclusively are sitting on kind of like the social graph that other smaller developers don't have access to. So Facebook Messenger does start appearing more and more like a central point of failure. Uh, and in a decentralized world, there is like no critical components uh, run by single companies that everyone kind of like relies on. The way that the internet is structured today is that you have to go through several central authorities to get to the apps that you want to get to. The two big ones, the DNS or domain name system, connects your computer to the right IP address. And the certificate of authority certifies that you're at the right application. If any of these are compromised, the entire network is compromised. The guys at Blockstack have envisioned a new way forward by replacing the DNS with the blockchain name system where the server identity is tied to the Bitcoin blockchain itself. Therefore, one, you don't have to go through a central authority to reach your apps, and two, the validity of the, of the blockchain removes the need for the certificate of authority. This kernel of a system is a foundation for a decentralized internet. People will like log on to Instagram and they upload a photo. Um, they're not really thinking that the photo is actually hosted by Instagram. It's it's on their servers. If that goes down, then the photo's gone. With Block, with, with Blockstack, you can upload your photo in, in, in your own storage. You have control. You can share it in, in any way that you'd like. And if it's gone, you know that it's gone because it's in your control. Where does Blockstack fit into that? I know you guys have different apps and a variety of developers, but could you talk a little bit about how that works and how you can help people understand how they would want to engage with Blockstack? In the centralized model, um, say you upload a photo to Facebook um, and you want to share it with your friend, your friend has to request access to that photo from Facebook and then Facebook will deliver that to your friend. So you have this middleman in, in, in the middle. Yeah. Uh, in the decentralized model, when I upload a photo, I'm uploading it to my own uh, private cloud mm -hmm. and when my friend wants to request it, they're requesting it directly to uh, directly from from me with no third parties involved. Yeah. So this is a bit more like how uh, how things work in the real world, right? In the decentralized world, you can think about it like it's turned inside out. It's a completely open social social graph. You can program directly to it. And what's interesting about this is um, because you've essentially opened it up, you've allowed for um, the ability for creativity and uh, innovation to occur on the application layer uh, with no permission required from uh, a centralized entity. A good analogy is like in the medieval times, you'd have sort of uh, feudal serfs. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're kind of living in that time right now online, but mm -hmm. many people are kind of unaware of the fact that this can be changed. Mm -hmm. We can do something about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're sort of digital serfs right now. Cool, so I'm gonna walk you through Travel Stack. Travel Stack's uh, brand new kind of app. Um, it's essentially like a decentralized Instagram, meaning um, each user owns their own photos mm -hmm. and when they post a photo, they're actually posting it to their own private cloud. And uh, when I'm viewing my friends' photos, I'll just pull down their photos from my, their private clouds. Mm -hmm. um, cool thing too is there's no, uh, there's no limit on file size. You can have like super high resolution photos, uh, which is nice, which Instagram, Instagram doesn't currently allow. Um, and you can take those photos with you to another app if you want to. Cool. Um, so uh, let's let's yeah. let's give it a shot. Let's do it. Yeah. So do the join now. And so it says sign in with Blockstack. So you're a new user. You can click that button. And you got to create a new ID. So you're going to check your username availability. Kay. This is a this is a, a subdomain. So this is one that uh, Blockstack PBC um, registers for you. They essentially pay the fee for you, and you can. You'll, you'll own that ID. Cool. So username available, nice. Now you'll create your password. You might want to do this one privately. <laughs> so this is your uh, decentralized ID. Yeah. This ID lives on the blockchain. So uh, this ID is one that uh, cannot be taken away. Um, it's one that it's one that uh, your friends can can discover without yeah. any third parties, and it's one that you'll take with you to every single app on Blockstack should you choose to use it. You can create multiple IDs if you want to. I have like a burner uh, ID, and then I have uh, my own ID, Patrick W. Stanley ID. <laughs> this button right here it works in the same way that uh, sort of like uh, 
login with Google or login with Facebook works, except for Google and Facebook don't own it. Yeah. You do. So let's click in there. Okay. So now we're signing in. Mm -hmm. First thing we can do is find find our friends. So let's find let's find Calvin. So Calvin is calvintran.id. And there he is. Cool. Cool. So because Travel Stack leverages uh, all these blockchain-based IDs, mm -hmm. um, what that means is they're leveraging a network of thousands and thousands and eventually millions of users that own their own ID. So instead of creating an app and having to get new users, they already have many, many, many gotcha. potential users. Yeah. So when I log when when I log in, I can see um, I can see Fred Wilson from U and Union Square Ventures. I can yeah. see Naval Ravikant. I can see Tim Berners Lee, who signed, who's the original creator of the web, who signed up on Blockstack. Um, hmm. And I can find them in every app. So it's great for apps to bootstrap. You can see Calvin posted a, a picture of his friend Frank here, uh, which is pretty cool. And you can um, you can like that. And those likes and these photos are all stored with Calvin. Gotcha. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So how would I load up a picture of my own? Let's go to your profile. So let's add a new post. Selby? Yep. Cool. All right, so here's our selfie. That's pretty cool. Uh, that selfie of us you know, is loaded to your private encrypted cloud. Mm -hmm. You can choose wherever that you can choose where that data lives. So mm -hmm. um, this is not owned by any developer in Palo Alto, not accessible <laughs> by any developer in Palo Alto uh, unless you give them access. And um, and that's pretty cool. You're taking back taking back your data. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> When I look at the world of blockchain, I see opportunities everywhere for decentralization, empowerment, and freedom. We know we can bring those changes to money and the internet, but what about the stock market, investments, and securities? Till next time.